Happy day after Easter, everybody. Today is a day of new technology and we are learning. We are listening and learning and trying to figure out brand new things and ways that we're going to be doing the program that will make it a little easier. And I'm excited. I'm also scared to death because things are a little bit different. And y'all know I don't like change, but I want change. That's kind of weird, isn't it? You want it to be better, but you're afraid of change. Well, we're going to change up some things. Today, we're going to share some of your Easter photos, you and your families. And I love when y'all share your photos. And this is going to be so sweet. I can say it was such a a day to be so thankful because the churches were full. Everybody I know said, oh man, we had overcrowded churches. Our kid had to sit in our lap. It was great. That is what Easter is about. Gather together and rejoice in the day, the most important day of the world. The tomb is empty. Yay. The tomb is empty. Now, my head has been empty lately because I've been trying to get some things together. I'm working on a new cookbook. And it's going to be featuring an old home and a kitchen that's been remodeled in this old home. And we're going to have stories of women who sit on the porch and tell stories. And we're going to share those stories in the cookbook. So I've been interviewing women and talking to women who have shared recipes with me. Well, a lot of those women lately have gone to be with Jesus, and I can't talk to him anymore, and it's so weird for me. But I want to say today, as I work on this cook, you see this lady? This is Precious Doreen Lee. She taught me so much about life, about cooking. She battled and beat cancer three times. She died in her 90s, and now I can't pick up the phone and call her and say, Doreen, how much did you say goes in that? Because... Y'all know I'm not really good with recipes. I do cookbooks, but I'm not good with recipes. But sweet Doreen, there's never been a day I didn't think, ah, oh, I need to ask her. I can't ask her anymore. She's gone to be with Jesus. But I'm so fortunate that all these amazing women were in my life, and I'm going to be sharing some of their recipes, some of their stories in a new cookbook that I'm working on, and it truly features a historical house. That's kind of where I decided I've got to get the ball rolling and finish this project. So... It's also going to, it's going to talk about canning. And you see this? This is farming. Not everybody has ever been on a farm. Not everybody has ever dug potatoes, but Scotty Mayfield has, because Scotty Mayfield has a big farm up in Tennessee. And that's what it's about. Now, let me tell you something I learned on Scotty Mayfield's farm. I learned that these tame blackberries don't taste worth a flip. The tame ones have no flavor. Get out and pick the wild ones that the Lord provides for us for free. These are big and beautiful and they look amazing, but they taste like nothing. They taste like cardboard. So the tame blackberries, they got to figure out something. They've got to rebreed them to make them better. So, but this is if you're out and about and you go up through Tennessee, stop at Delano, stop up at the Mayfield Farm, go out and get some fresh stuff. Even if you just buy cabbage, because cabbage is that cold weather thing that you can still grow, you can be making kraut. And Dawn's going to teach y'all how to make kraut because she makes it all the time. And we're going to actually do a program with Dawn teaching you to make kraut. She makes it all the time because Lonnie Fountain lives on it. And... I was going through all these photos in an album that Singleton's brought me, and look at one of my favorite, Aaron Tibbin. He is so amazing. He's going to be back in Hiawassee in the near future. Loved interviewing him. Such a nice, nice guy. The thing I really, really love about him is he honors veterans at all his programs. He has a bucket on the stage, and he gathers money. And he gives it to veterans' donations. It's just, it's amazing. It's all about giving back, guys. That's what life should be about. Now, today, we're going to give you back your pictures. We're going to share a whole lot of Easter pictures of you and your family. A couple of them are birthdays of grandkids that have birthdays. One of them is a picture of my precious Zana who had her first Easter. And she didn't know what Easter was. All she knew was that we were out there playing with the goats and the chickens and she could care less about the chickens, but she likes the goats, and they like her too. Now there are 10 honeybee hives on Lonesome Dove Farm, and that means that last year's bounty of 19 quarts of honey will be much, much bigger if the bees keep doing what they're supposed to do. 
and Uncle John tells him what to do, and they kind of mind him because he's he's kind of the boss, and he says, all right, this is what we're going to do. If you haven't tried beekeeping, it's really interesting, and I guess it's really fun, but he has put electric wires up all around the farm because you know what else comes to farm life? Big black bear, and the bear have gotten near the honey. Well, we always see these commercials with the bear raiding the honey pot. Well, they ain't gonna raid these honey pots. If they do, they're gonna get fried. So, kind of makes them stop and think about getting into the honeybees, but it happens. And that's part of farming. You know, if you're farming, you gotta take care of the varmints, you gotta take care of the bugs that get on your crops, you gotta decide how do you do it? Do you do it organically? A lot of people are raising those um, eggs that are so healthy and it's $5 a dozen, but they're healthy, healthy, healthy. So we're gonna share now your photos of your families with Easter. So here we go. And this one, we're gonna start with this because this is a special day in the life of this family. That's a picture of the lady who lived there's car and now the son has a car like mom had. And um, that is pretty cool today. That family is in a big transition period and things will change, but hopefully it will be a, a good transition and everything will be great. But isn't that cool if you could find a car like your mama had? Now, precious, precious, precious. Becoming a widow as young as that young lady did, she is raising her child alone and uh, had no idea that COVID would take her precious husband, but it happened and she's still smiling, she's still happy, and she's a great mom. So. And that's what it's about. We can't give up. And these two precious loved going to Disney World. They loved it. It was a surprise visit that mom and dad planned and didn't tell them they were going until they were just a few hours away from Disney. And it gave them plenty of time to be excited. So I hope you had a great holiday. And this is some of the sweetest little youngins in the world. And uh, Easter, Easter, Easter. And that's what it's about. It's about sharing and enjoying family and spending time. And uh, again, Xana's so little, she doesn't know a thing about e eating or eating eggs or catching eggs or picking up eggs, but her nanny learned that the chocolate eggs were pretty good. And there you go. Celebrate those children, celebrate those generations. Get your cameras out and capture the moment because we don't know how many moments, how many minutes, how many, how many opportunities we have to visit with family and friends, but get out those cell phones and capture the moment. It is so very, very important. And that's what life is. It's looking back and remembering those special, special times, those special times. And there's Miss Rhoda. And you know, the Reese family has grown and grown and grown and these girls are growing up so fast. Everybody's growing up so fast. It's just crazy. It's crazy, these young uns were little bitties and now they're not anymore. So it just, it blows my mind at how fast the kids are growing up. And they're off to college and they're having birthdays and there's Ricky Fields and, and one of the things that I wanted to share with y'all today and I didn't get it done was Ricky Fields doing a song that he did right here at ETC that was amazing, amazing. And that child is a miracle. You talk about God's grace, that child is a miracle. Precious, precious, precious little boy. And oh, what a life story. And how precious is that? Becoming a young widow, you start and you just stay happy and you do what you can for your family. And that is one of my favorite families. I've known that young lady since she was a little bitty one and so beautiful and, and such a precious, precious family. Love it, love it, love it. It's so cool to be able to share now this, somebody chose to spend Easter at Bristol, and I think that's okay if you're a guy and you like racing. I think it would have been a pretty good thing, except, I, you know, you gotta go to church if you can. But Bristol was packed, and I didn't know that they raced on Easter. I was surprised, because I thought for some weird reason they took that day off, but this year they were racing at Bristol. And uh, one of our local residents, and we won't name him because we don't want him to feel like we've invaded his guilt for going racing instead of going to church, but he had a blast. He had a blast. And that's what it's about, getting out and enjoying the time with friends and family. And uh, precious, precious, Bannon County Mama, there you go. So sweet, so sweet. And you will recognize a lot of these people because a lot of them are your friends and neighbors. And there is our Jennifer Bandanner. 
She worked here. She is so responsible for helping me put together the special that we did about Brady Singleton. And this is the month that we will celebrate Brady Singleton's life. He was killed by a drunk driver when he was three years and nine months old. Jennifer helped by writing a beautiful song that is in a tribute we did for him. Now, is that not so sweet? Look at that precious family. It's so neat to see everybody in their Sunday best and uh, just, just beautiful, beautiful photographs. And uh, I love being able to share these with y'all. And that's a happy birthday, boy. And those birthdays, when it comes around a holiday, it's kind of hard. I know Angela always fussed because she was born Christmas Eve. Trust me, I did not plan on going in labor Christmas Eve. And this is my friend of over 40 years. And they are um, in a battle right now trying to uh, keep, keep folks healthy. And uh, please pray for Bonnie and her family. And my gosh, how I love her. You talk about a godly woman and, and a precious, precious, precious duo. They've been married many, many years and I uh, love them dearly with all my heart. So precious. She makes cool t-shirts and uh, has some really neat ones. And, and that's what it's about, you know, that's what it's about. It's about staying, staying strong, staying in faith while you're facing those battles that life often throws at us. And I love that young man. He was my weatherman here many, many years ago, and he did a great job in front of the green screen. Nathan is such a good kid, and uh, he and Ansley are enjoying raising animals with FFA. And uh, there you go. I love being able to share your lives. That is so sweet. And this is my new, let's see, I guess it's a great grand dog. And uh, it belongs to Dawn's sweet sister, Amanda. And it is precious, precious, precious. And I'd say he will be very, very spoiled. She waited a long time to get him. And he's going to be rotten. And this... Lori Tipton is responsible for me being here doing Heart of the Home. Everybody else came and we did interviews and we did some shows and we did this and we did that. And then one day she came and she said, would you do something on a regular basis? And I said, I don't have time. Well, the rest is history. 17 years later, I'm making time. So a lot of fun, a lot of great memories. And to Lori, thank you, thank you, thank you. And what precious, precious sons you have. I love it, I love it, I love it. And I love when these generations get together and you see that they still have mom, they still have grandma, they still have those special moments. And uh, to Shauna and Mike, what a beautiful, beautiful family. What a beautiful, beautiful family. Love it, love it, love it. So sweet, so sweet. And I actually have a picture of this young lady sitting here on the set with Freddie and I many, many, many years ago. I told her she could come and be on the show if she would sing a Loretta Lynn song, and she did. And she was very, very young, and she did a great job. And now she's grown up, and it just blows my mind. It's just time has passed so quickly. And this is the Dixon family. I was over in Calhoun, Georgia one night, and Heart of the Home was airing at WBBS over in Calhoun. And they ran up to me at a church and said, you're that lady on TV, aren't you? And I said, yes, I am. And they said, we watch you every Sunday morning. And uh, we've been friends for a long, long time. And I love that family. Think about this, y'all. This is today's thought for the day. When God has selected you, it doesn't matter who else has rejected or neglected you. God's favor outweighs all opposition. Keep that in your mind. Keep that in your mind. So sweet, so sweet. And there we go again. Family, 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 and churches. And that's what's so precious. Everybody got together and had a good day. It was a beautiful day. The sun was out, a little bit chilly. Just a beautiful, beautiful day to gather your family together and to spend a precious, precious time together. And this young lady is down in Warner Robins, and she is so precious, and her mama is such a delight, such a sweet, 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 sweet girl. Precious, Lord have mercy. Mm-mm-mm, how precious, oh my goodness gracious. And I love the churches were full. That was so precious to see these churches filling up and not a bunch of empty pews and just a good, good day for folks to gather together. 
And that, that reason, that is truly the reason. And now, one of my favorite, favorite families. I love the Parton family. They are part of what made ETC great in the beginning. They stood here. They professed their faith. They sang songs. They shared messages. They told you that the altar was always open. And they, they are an amazing, amazing family. And uh, boy, how I love the Parton family. Love him, love him, love him. Please say a prayer for Jeff. He's got some health issues he's been dealing with, and uh, but he's he's strong. He's strong in his faith, and he's going to be great. So there you go. There's the Partons, and there is Zanna Jordan. Now y'all, is that not baby cute? She is so cute, and she is so sweet, and she is so good. I don't know what'll happen later in life, but she's so good. It kind of makes me nervous because she's so good. She's not a lot of trouble. She's just sweet as sugar and always happy. She likes to eat, she likes to nap, and she likes to laugh. And that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good route to be. So, yeah, and how sweet Karen Peck and new grandbaby. And uh, Lord have mercy how I love Karen Peck and the message that she has shared when we think about the song Four Days Late. We played it over and over here for many, many years. And it is true, Jesus is always time. He is, nah, he's not four days late. He's right on time. He is right on time. And look at that precious little baby girl. I love sharing your photos. This is so sweet. And it was just a beautiful day to do that. And happy, happy birthday, young man. Happy birthday. And you've got one good Mimi. One good Mimi. <laughs> And there we go back to the Parton family and just continue to pray for Jeff. They are dealing with some health issues, but uh, he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. And as you can see, and there we go. All right, y'all. We're going to show we have one little bitty video that's real short of baby Zanna. And I hope that it captures her personality because there's just something about this baby Everybody knew the story. Um, she wasn't meant to be. We thought that it would never happen. And she's healthy and she's happy and she's such a blessing. And so every single moment of her life has been truly a gift from God. And here we go to just a little short video of Mrs. Zanna Jordan. No video. It didn't work. See, we've got new technology going on. Okay. Now, are we going to go to a commercial break now? Are any of the videos working? We have, we have new technology. We're working on it. Today's an experiment, y'all. So, and I'm the guinea pig. Today's the experiment. So, what are we going to next, guys? Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ballground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third-generation race car driver, and we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, 
or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Welcome to New Technology. We are working on getting some things in there that we have, we just don't know where we have them, but they're there. And we're gonna share those in just a little bit. But I wanna to talk to y'all a little bit about the past because we're leaving the past and we're advancing to new technology. We just have to get used to it. And we have to make it happen and da 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 da. How many of us changed the way we work in our workforce when we went from cotton mills? And I was looking at a story today about how, how textiles wove their way into the fabric of Southern life. The textile industry did wave their did weave their way into our life as we remember many of the towns, the cotton mills, the uh, blue jean factories, the tennis shoe factory over in Jasper. Many of those were a way of life for all of us. Go to work early, get off at three o'clock, then they had a second shift. We adjusted our life to that. Now we all have a life that revolves around technology and a cell phone and uh, everybody says, we don't do, do DVDs anymore. And I'm like, what? My life was a DVD. I've got hundreds and hundreds of DVDs. And I'm like, if you're changing technology that much, what is the future going to be? How are we going to keep up with this? Well, we got to keep up. We have to keep up. And that's part of what we're trying to do here. And we're going to new equipment that is going to make it easier, we hope, just as soon as we get it figured out. So it's one of those things I don't know what's next, you know? We don't know what's gonna happen in television. When we went to high definition cameras, I was like, oh my gosh, we're gonna use high def cameras? Are you kidding me? Well, they're great, they're absolutely great. And investing in that um, made a difference for everybody. Investing in smaller cameras when we go out and do the ball field. And you know, they do baseball, basketball, football. They um, cover the graduations and not having to carry those huge cameras makes a big difference and it makes coming back into the studio, getting the product ready to, to put into your homes, makes it all easier. It's just a matter of timing and it's not real simple and it takes a little while. And if y'all could ever come in this building and see the wiring, I said if we ever had a tornado, the wiring in this building had wrap themselves around somebody and choke them to death because it was wired forever and ever. And everything used to have long cables, long, big, heavy-duty cables. So there's a lot of cable going on in this building. There's a lot of technology in this building, and the technology is changing, and we're going to have to adapt to it. And it may take a little while to get us used to it, but I want to remind you all about an event that's going to happen this weekend here in LJ. You see this hat? You see that hat is called Woofstock and it is benefiting Focus and um, tomorrow you're gonna get to see and hear about that. We're gonna talk about that tomorrow. I'm gonna share all that's gonna be happening. If you have a pet and you'd like to bring your pet for the pet parade, you can. If you have um, something going on that you want to be there and maybe adopt, you can. There are gonna be all kinds of things going on but it's gonna be benefiting Focus, and if you don't know, Focus is Friends of Gilmer Animal Shelter. There's so much going on at the animal shelter, and they still need volunteers. They need lots of volunteers. But with the donation that was made a couple of years ago, there's gonna be a huge expansion of the animal shelter, and, and sadly, there are many times that that shelter has been full to capacity, and um, hopefully this new project will make it, everybody has more fun, everybody has more playroom, and it's just gonna make it a little bit easier. So I hope that's gonna work. You know, when I look back on the Easter weekend and I think about um, 
how many people got to be with family? Not everybody. Not everybody got to see their children. Not everybody got to spend time in church with family. But we were blessed at, at uh, First Baptist of Ball Ground. We got to see an amazing baptism of a very, very special young lady. And Hannah was, um, oh, it was just precious, absolutely precious. And to her sweet mama who was there in the baptismal with her, just a sweet, sweet day. That's what it's about. It's about getting together and sharing and giving back. And I think that's what we all need to look at in life. We've all got something to give. When I started doing this last cookbook, people were calling and saying, I want to get one of your cookbooks. Well, I'm out. And I've been out for over a year. And so they said, well, when are you going to do a new one? Well, I started thinking about it and working on it. And honestly, until I started working on an estate up in Morganton, I kind of laid it aside. But I found a bunch of handwritten recipes. And they were so brown and so faded and so, and I'm trying to figure it out. And I thought it's time to get back on that. It is so important for you to capture the things that you do to share with the next generation because your grandkids are gonna remember something that Nanny made. But they're gonna say, how did she make that? So I wanna suggest to you, even if you record it, if you just record it on your iPhone and save those recordings, if you make it, I think that would be the easiest way in today's te technological world is to get somebody to video you making what you're making and then sharing that with the grandkids. So they can say, oh, that's how Nanny did it. I couldn't figure out how she made it look like that. And when I think about all the heart of the homes we have, from the ones that Mama Lucy shared recipes with me, Doreen shared recipes with me. Myrna Denson came and made her meatloaf with me. Myrna used to come and eat my mama's meatloaf all the time. She loved my mama's meatloaf and she'd have a meatloaf sandwich. When I think about those special ladies, they're all gone. But if you have your iPhone or an iPad, get out and get them to cook your favorite dish and record it and just save that recording because there'll be a day you're going, is that how Granny made cornbread? It doesn't look like hers. Well, yeah, it probably does if you pay attention and you, and you listen to your Granny. I think about canning because canning season is coming up. And um, I make pear relish. I make pear preserves. I don't do sauerkraut, but Dawn does the easiest, best kraut, and everybody loves her kraut. She does also make the world's best salsa. But um, she didn't have anybody teach her at home. I didn't teach her how to do that. One of her neighbors actually taught her how to do that. So if your mom's not around to teach you, I bet you could hook up with an older neighbor who knows how to do all those things. And she could share that with you and she could help you. And, um, and just, you know, again, video what she's doing. And sometimes it's like, okay, do I cold pack it? Do I pressure it? I don't like pressure cookers. They still make me re really nervous. I think it's the fact that I blew out my kitchen ceiling with a pressure cooker one time. That'll do it to you. And it did it to me. And I said, I'm not doing that anymore. It sure does cook good green beans though and sure does make good soup beans fast, but I don't do that anymore, so. I don't know if, uh, you know, technology, if, if there's a better way to can. A lot of people still love and going to the cannery, and we still have active canneries in Fannin County, Gilmer County, and Pickens County. And I think that's really cool. If you haven't taken your kids to the cannery, then maybe this is a year to do it. I don't know if any of y'all subscribe to this, but it's called Past Times. And this edition was from 2007, but I kept it because it had some of my favorite stuff in it. And I don't know if this magazine made it through all the hard times that we've had, but but um, I love this. There's, a, there's an article on the back page and it says, are Southerners born that way or are they made? Well, what are they talking about? Are they talking about there's a problem with Southerners? What are they talking about? And it says, for cash, cotton mills would be a continuation of the Southern heritage a district culture all its own and only found in the South. The South does have a very different culture and we do have a different culture, but you know what? People are flying down here to get into it. Uh-oh, what happened? <coughs> no signal. We are doing fine. We're just learning this new equipment. <laughs> 
Lord, y'all, this is a test. This is only a test. I don't know what's going on, but this is a test. We're going to get it done. We're going to get it right. We're going to figure it out before the day is over. Maybe. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. But we are trying. We are trying. So, you know, maybe today would be a good day for me to write my cookbook. I can just sit here and get y'all to call me on my cell phone and I'll write down all your recipes and we'll get a cookbook done. I had hoped to share a very, very special story today from Ball Ground, but with the technical difficulty we had, I didn't get to. I know you got to meet Matthew <clears throat> a couple of weeks back, and we were talking about the fact that he carries a 40-pound cross through Ball Ground. Yesterday was his final day to do that. And I got to meet his two sons who made that walk with him. And you think about this. Dad's been doing this. He did it for 40 days, and then Jesus told him to do it for longer. So he, he picked it up and walked another three weeks. He carries this cross to remind us all that um, we all face burdens. We all face things that we think we can't fix. We think that we can't get through. We think that that's going to kill us. We think that something, you know, we just face things that we think we can't face. But Jesus faced the cross. And he, he not only faced the cross, he endured the cross and he arose from the grave. And that's what Easter was about. And I wanted to share Matthew's story with you today. We didn't get to do that. But in the near future, we will. Because that is part of what makes us the strong people that we are. We remember that there's somebody who was beaten, beaten almost to death, and then hung on a cross. And then he arose. And he arose for us. So it gives us all strength. And it helps us to get through those moments that we're thinking, how did this happen, and why did it happen to me, and how am I going to get through it, and then we find a way through it, and um, I, I think that that is the best thing we can possibly do, is share with others that we do have the strength, because we have faith, and faith is usually all that gets us through everything we're facing. I know as I've watched the Singletons face this, this terrible day on April the 29th, um, we will be once again thinking of Brady Singleton and what happened on that horrible day because some people chose to drink and drive. They started drinking at 9 a.m. that morning, and they drank all day, and about 2 o'clock that afternoon, they hit and killed their little precious son, and uh, we all face that with them. We all gather around them, and we all support them, because you know what's so sad? It could happen to any of us. It could happen to any of us. A family of five was killed over the Easter weekend because somebody hit them head on and their van exploded into flames. Five out of six people died in that Easter weekend incident. We are so blessed. We are so blessed to be here today. We all made it through driving to the city. We all drove, we probably drove distances to see family members. We all made it. Every time I get in a car, I think, is this my last trip? Because we have heard so many horrific accidents happening that's no fault of your own. So, um, you know, a as we approach April and as we approach that April 29th day, which is a very sad day, but it's a day we need to remember. And if you know somebody who thinks they're going to drink and drive, get their keys, give them a ride, hog time if you have to do it. Whatever you have to do, don't let somebody drink and drive because there's a family celebrating the holidays without their son because some people chose to drink and drive. So please, please take my advice. I want to share something with you that I found in the Pickens County Progress. And this is, this is something about my mama. My mama had a, a strength like nobody I've ever known. Um, we had people who gathered in and, and spent time with mama. It was during her last days as she was battling cancer. And she was still smiling and she was still happy. And, and when I look at that, that's one of the things I love about publications where you can you see it, you hold it, you feel it. That's what the Pickens County Progress has been to Pickens County for over a hundred years. And um, they are still going strong and doing well. But when I was going through these articles and finding the things that my daughter had saved, my daughter always saved things that had something to do with us. And I found one thing, I can't read it today because I don't have my glasses with me and I can't see these little bit words. But this is funny because my daughter was a smoker. My mama was a smoker. My mama died of lung cancer. My daughter was smoking and um, actually had the nerve at 14 years old to light a cigarette and try to hand it to me because I caught cigarettes in her pocketbook. I looked down and I saw a pack of Marlboro and about had a heart attack. 
And she said, Mama, try one. It'll cut the edge off your tension. And I said, I'm going to cut the edge off your tension in about a minute. But um, they, they made a new rule years ago that you have to click it and put your kid in a seat belt. Okay, put your kid in a seat belt and put them in the car like my mom and daddy did with us. We didn't even have seat belts. We didn't have, there was no safety. Mom and daddy hauled five kids around. We went round and round to the varsity in an old station wagon, but Mama and Daddy were sitting in the front seat with a cigarette lit and had the windows rolled up. And me and four siblings were sitting back there breathing that stuff. Now, if that's what you think is good for your kids, shame on you. If you have to smoke, smoke outside your car. Don't put your kids in the car and smoke them up. I picked up a baby one day to hold it, and its blanket smelled like a cigarette. And I thought, Lord have mercy. Well, my daughter wrote an article, even though she was a smoker, she wrote an article and sent it to the Pickens County Progress, and it talked about that. And she was talking about, she was taking care of my mother at the time, and it says, my grandmother's losing her life to cancer. Yes, she sure did smoke 53 years of two or three packs a day. And, and Angela smoked, but she said it just got a hold of her when she looked and saw kids that were belted into their seat belts in their car seats, and two moms were sitting in the front seat smoking. And she said, yeah, I'm a smoker, but I don't smoke in front of my child, and I don't smoke around her. We all think, oh, well, we're doing the best we can to raise our kids. Okay, let's be a great influence. My mother is the reason I don't smoke. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life because my mama chain smoked. Everything we owned smelled like nasty cigarettes. Everything, everywhere we went smelled like a cigarette. And if people would invite us over and say, now, Hazel, we don't smoke in our house, mama would say, well, kids, we're going home. They won't let me smoke. I'm like, are you kidding me? So when Angela wrote this article, I was it blew my mind. I was like, I can't believe my smoking kid wrote this article. But the Progress published it, and this was published on June the 20th in 2002. That was the month before my mama went to be with Jesus. And I guess that was, you know, Angela said um, for 19 days she tried to quit smoking, and she, she couldn't do it. And she smoked, I reckon, until the day she died. But... She tried, and she said, I just couldn't quit smoking, but it still got on her nerves that people would lock those kids in the car, and she wrote this lengthy letter about it to the paper, and I thought, well, that's pretty cool. And uh, when I was reading it the other day, I thought, when Angela got to heaven, I wonder if she realized that they don't have convenience stores and they don't sell Marlboro. If she did, she probably got angry. But anyway, many smokers are reading this and saying, I'm full of it, but a few smokers will think about it and possibly do the right thing, I hope. Smoking is certainly not the only cause of cancer, but smoking is the highest cause and completely self-inflicted. Parents, if you must self-inflict yourself, please, please give your children a chance. Buckle them up, keep them in a car seat, but at the same time, give them fresh air to breathe. And that was from my daughter. I can't believe my kid wrote that because my kid was a smoker and she did love smoking. So I thought that was pretty cool that, that she thought that. And it was because she got behind some ladies at a fast food drive through and she came into the office that day fussing about it. And she said, I can't believe those little babies were sitting back there in those car seats and they were all done. You know, there was nothing they could do but sit there and breathe that stuff. Y'all want me to depress you today because I found another one of them things about the grocery store prices and it about made me puke. <laughs> Butterball hens, 79 cents a pound. Fresh leg quarters, 29 cents a pound. Are you kidding me? When we look at the grocery prices then, oh, this one, y'all are going to really get angry right now. Chuck roast, boneless chuck roast, 169. Last week it was 7.99 a pound. Think about that, y'all. Now this is one that really blows my mind. Country ham, 99 cents a pound. Right now it's three dollars and 49 cents for 12 ounces. So what's the price ratio to that? About three to one. It's it's about tripled. Yeah. And this, this is the best one of all. Extra large shrimp is $7.99 a pound. That's really the only one that's only gone up about $4. I don't know why the shrimp got left out of this, of this mess we're in. But when you look at these prices that the grocery store used to, and these were, you know, our regular grocery stores. It was, um, 
That one was Ingalls, and the first one I used was the Blue Star. And, um, you know, two uh, eggs were three dozen for a dollar. Did y'all hear what I said? Three dozen for a dollar. Now it's three dollars for a dozen. So it's crazy what they're doing to us at the grocery stores. And I hope that we will find, um, you know, maybe, maybe it want, makes you want to farm a little bit. Maybe it wants you to grow a little bit of what you have to eat. Maybe it wants to encourage you to just quit letting them take advantage of us. Grow you some beans, grow you some taters, plant you some cabbage. And if you can do it without fertilizing, that's really cool. But um, some of the fertilizers have been taken off the market. There was one that we used to use, and uh, I think Granny called it Guana, and you'd run to Hinton and buy that and use it. But grow you some stuff. Put it up. I, I cooked a bunch of greens this weekend and put them in freezer bags and um, bought them on sale and cooked them all up and put them in the freezer. So do that. Do what you can to save a little bit of money because we all know the grocery prices are about ridiculous. They're just about ridiculous. This, my favorite one is still fresh ground beef, 88 cents a pound, and right now it's 4.08 a pound. So yeah, that's a little bit higher. And this fresh eggs, three dozen a dollar, that just don't seem right, y'all. It just don't seem right, but it is, it is. And uh, Crisco, 159 This week, somebody sent me a thing and said, can you believe Crisco is $10.99 for the three-pound can? It was $159. Now, that's almost 10 times the price up. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, and we got to do something about it. You know, you got to feed your kids. And uh, think about the, what the schools are spending on school lunches because the school lunches, I guess they buy ahead of time from commissaries or wherever they buy from, and they probably get prices that are in bulk, but even the bulk prices, and what does it cost to feed a kid today? So, so you think about that. You think about how are they feeding these children on a budget, and I don't know what a lunch cost. It was 35 cents for lunch when I went to school 100 years ago. So I think it's maybe a dollar or something now, but when you think about that, these kids have got to eat, and they try to give them balanced meals, balanced diet, you know, whatever. So that means your cost of sending your kids to school goes up for the school, and then it goes up for the taxes for us, and that's what it's all about. You know, it's all about cost, supply, demand. That's it, and, and if there's a supply, okay. If there's a demand, okay. And if it doesn't work out, then we are in so much trouble. And we have been in a lot of trouble lately. And there are just silly little things that we need that you can't find. But I, got, I do have some good news for myself. I hit a tree in my car, which is not good news. But one of the parts that was going to cost $194, we ended up finding on eBay for $59. So... Sometimes you can shop around and save a little bit of money. And I was rather excited to save about $140, $130. So, uh, yeah, that was exciting. Plus, it included free shipping. So, yeah, I was excited. But was I excited when I hit that tree? Nope. I was mad at myself. My backup camera didn't work. The bushes were in the way, and I didn't see the tree, but I felt it when I hit that sucker, and I hit it hard because I was backing up backwards, and I was going fast up a hill. So shouldn't have done it, tore it up, got to fix it. That's life. You know, we're dealing with life every single day, and we know that we just have to get by the best way we can. we got to get by the best way we can. I want to remind you all about some things we've got for sale, too. We've got a beautiful dining room suit for sale. The lady paid $2,000 for the set. It is a long, long farm table and eight chairs, and we're asking $500 for it. And it has to be moved out by this weekend because we're closing on our house. So please pick up the phone and call me at 404 375-0590 if you are interested in that. We had a curio cabinet, but a guy's picking it up today. We also have a trundle bed and a chest of drawers. She paid $2,000 for the bed, the mattress, and the chest of drawers, and she's asking $400 for it. 
So um, 400 are best offered. Come and see it. It's in downtown Ball Ground over at Lantern Walk. So come and see that and help us get her stuff out because she's got to move this weekend and it's, it's getting down to the wire and got more that'll fit where she's going. So, so she's got a lot of stuff for sale, a lot of cool stuff. And again, that, uh, that table is beautiful and she paid $2,000 for it and it's $500 or best offer and it includes eight chairs and it's just really nice furniture so so if you're looking for something and if you're just getting married and you want to save money that'll sure save you money because 500 beats 2,000 any day so I'm trying to think oh yeah and she has an exercise bicycle but I think somebody's spoken for it and um, a few other things that I will add to the list in the next day or so. But again, we've got to get rid of it in the next few days. So I put it on Marketplace and I've had to answer about 80 questions. And, and I'm like, y'all, just pick up the phone and call me. The best way to find out is to pick up the phone and call me. And you can call me at 404-375-0590 if you're interested in the dining room suit or anything else we've got in that moving sale. So. Okay, we've talked about any and everything today because we had a technical difficulty. I hope by the next time I'm back here, the technical difficulty is fixed because we didn't get to share and I wanted to share Matthew's cross thing. It is on YouTube and you can go to YouTube and watch it and uh, a lot of folks don't have the internet and don't know how to do that. But I wanted to share his story because yesterday was his last day to, to walk and carry the cross Unless Jesus comes in and tells him something different, he's not going to be doing that for a few days. And, and I'm sure his shoulder will be happy to rest a little bit. So there's somebody out there that's going to influence you today, whether it be good or bad. There's somebody out there who's going to encourage you today. Maybe good, maybe bad. Somebody's going to tell you one thing. Somebody else is going to tell you something else. You know what, it, you know what really, really matters is that you follow your heart and you do what your heart tells you to do. My sister always told me, be still and let God work. Boy, do I wish my sister was here today. Do I wish my sister was here today so I could just talk to her. But she had one chemo treatment. She went to be with the Lord. When I think about it, my, my sweet brother-in-law sent me pictures this weekend. He's redoing her bedroom like she wanted it. And I, it just it makes him feel good and he's so proud of it. And I know she would be proud of him. It's amazing how we're on the phone on Thursday and on Saturday night she's gone. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed the next breath. So be cautious how you treat people. Be careful how you address the things that happen that shouldn't happen. Be careful if you're hurtful and if you're doing something to harm somebody, don't do it. Be sweet, be good, be kind. Just try it. Just just try to be good. And um, I guarantee you, life will, you'll see blessings and the curses will go away. And somebody told me yesterday that you just, all you have to do is rebuke Satan and he'll leave. And I'm like, really? Well, Satan be gone from every home that we know. Satan be gone from everywhere because we are in a world where we need each other. We need the comfort, we need the support, and we need the love of our friends and our neighbors. And we've been so fortunate over the years to have so many of y'all contact me, share with me. I was looking at this cookbook the other day, and it's the second cookbook I did. And so many of our viewers sent in recipes. So once again, I'm going to ask y'all, send me your old granny recipes. I want some really cool old recipes that your grandmas did. I'm going to republish what we've already got, and then we're going to add to it, and I want some new old stuff. And this came about because I happened to go through some of Sheila Thomas's old, old recipes, and I was like, well, I've never heard of that, and I've never even imagined that. And I thought, I'm going to share these recipes. If you have a video camera, get your grandkids, get your great-grandkids, and sit down and video those recipes for you to share with them because one day they're going to say, now, how did Nanny do that? And it will just bless their hearts if they get to see you and hear you. What I'd give to hear my grandmother talk to me today. So do that and, and record those and keep them so you can share them with the next generation and the next generation. I don't know about the next generation. The next generation technology will be so weird. What, what are they going to next? I mean, what are they going to next? We have no idea. 
It's always strange. It's always smaller and better, they keep telling us. It's smaller, easier, and better. Well, I don't know about that, but we're learning. We're learning and we're trying, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with this new technology, but I guarantee you it is one of those things. It's going to happen. It's like progress. Progress is going to come. You might as well get ready for it. You might as well accept it. And you might as well say, let's make the most of this. But at the same time, we need to preserve the past because the past is so precious. And again, when I was looking at this magazine, and it, it is called Pastimes, um, y'all check it out. If you can find old articles in it, it's really, really cool. And I'm going to get on eBay and see if I can buy some of their old editions because there's some cool stuff in here. And it is talking about those pastimes. And, and one of the things I loved about this, because we think about Canton and the Mill Village, look at what's happened to the Mill Village at Canton. It's like a big to-do now. And everybody goes down there for everything. There's some great restaurants. There's some great shops. There are all kinds of things in there where you can go and spend the day in what used to be the Mill Village. And it's just part of, part of progress. And uh, there's no telling what was spent in Canton at that, at that facility. No telling. But it's absolutely beautiful. So if you haven't been to downtown Canton lately, go and park and walk around. The last time I went, we went to see Lee Greenwood and I went to see Mike Pence there. And um, I can't remember who else I went to see there. Oh, and I saw the best, the best sheriff in the world. Cherokee County Sheriff was down there. Frank Reynolds was there. <laughs> so it's all about getting out, getting to know your communities. And, and look at the old buildings. Look at the old homes and then go drive through and see some of the new developments. And you'll see that a lot of the older homes are being now recreated by the new designers and the new architects. They're spiffing them up a little bit, but they all look like old white farmhouses, and that's really, really cool. So tomorrow we're going to be visiting with our focus friends again. And uh, I hope that you will tune in and get all the information about the events that are going to be happening with them. If you have pets that need to be spayed and neutered, don't forget that they are actually doing another clinic and uh, often they do that drive through clinic and then they're going to be giving away the coupons again and when they give away those coupons you better get in line early. I think they told a story about somebody got in line really really early because they had a couple of dogs that they needed that done but you save a lot of money and that's why Focus is raising money this weekend. So they're raising money and raising awareness. Don't shop, adopt. Don't shop, adopt, and come out this weekend and enjoy, and enjoy Focus as they do Woofstock. Is that not cool? Cool, cool, cool. And no, that hat won't fit over all this hair, but I'm going to try it one day. Maybe not today. <laughs> Today's not been the day to do that. I hope to see you again soon, only on ETC. Y'all have a great, great day.